Hi guys, what is up? Welcome to No Pro Player. I'm Ilona and today we are playing Beacon Pines. And in the last episode, we investigated at the warehouse and we found some pretty suspicious, disturbing stuff. So today we are starting with the chapter three. Let's continue where we left off. Finding a friend. The next morning, it was quieter than usual at the breakfast table. Only the sound of silverware and chewing interrupted the awkward silence. I finished drawing um, a mess of gem last night. Uh huh. So that will uh, that will need to get uh, delivered into town today. Okay. What did you and Rollo get up to yesterday? Oh, nothing interesting. Hello. Calm down. No, oh, of course, it was uh, the right thing to do. Start gathering folks, I will be right there. Are you sure there isn't anything you want to tell me about yesterday? Anything I want to tell you? Not really, we just sort of run around a bit. Gran's brow furrowed. She let out a long sigh. Her voice was quiet and even. I have to go take care of something. You are to stay in this house for the day. Under no cir circumstance, circumstances. Are you to leave? What? If I am not back by dinner, uh, there is a stew in the icebox. But, but nothing. You are to stay here, understand? Yeah. Say it. I will stay here till you get back. Good. Well, that was strange. Anything new? Interact with? Let's go here. Luca was desperate to check in with Rollo. Until Gran returned, he was trapped. Mm -hmm. Not sneak out. And slide in. A faint electronic sound floated in the air. Is that uh, coming from upstairs? Oh, our walkie talkie. Hello? Is anyone there? Hello? Rollo, is that you? Knocking on the door. Oh, hey, Roxy. If uh, this is about me uh, accidentally kicking you yesterday, it's Rollo here. No. Look at me, Luca. This is serious. It's Rollo here. No, I haven't seen him since yesterday. Rollo didn't come home last night. What? A pit formed in Luca's stomach. Where was uh, the last place you saw him? We were playing around in deep wood, and then it uh, was late and we went home. Oh, we deep wood? Weep, weep wood. <laughs> if he is alive, I am going to kill that little creep. Is there anything else, anything uh, that he said? Luca's mouth felt dry. No, we were just messing around. Okay, I need to go let people know to check the woods. 
You just stay out of the trouble. Go see if he's uh, hiding in the library or something. Luca could feel his heart beating in his throat. Rolla? Where are you? Check the library for Rolla. But Granny said to not leave. And then she says to go. <laughs> well... I guess we're gonna go... What is this way? The road leading to Beacon Pines was long and... uninspiring. A sort of natural barrier for the impatient. Hey, Bert. Have you seen Rollo? Nope. Thought I've uh, almost been uh, thinking to... Uh, talking to clipboard. Uh, they're setting up lots of stuff for the festival. This one said he had to, to process some answers. I told him that was fine. I'll wait uh, right here until he gets back. Oh. We're just chilling. Pondering. Oh, they... Put all the boxes around Mr. Sinclair. How are you, Luca? Hello again, Pete. I'm not Pete, you silly goose. I'm Toby. You could have fooled me. Well, hey, it's a uh, no problemo. The important thing is uh, we would love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, I'm uh, getting that impression. We're we're all a part of something special, Luca. And it is all starts right here in Beacon Pines. I got. He looked up from the clipboard excitedly. That's right. So how about you tell uh, you start uh, by telling me? Look, no offense, but I've got uh, my own stuff to take care of. Oh uh, god, you're a joker. We are all the part of this together. <laughs> you will let us know when you are free to answer a few questions. Okay, like never. Oh, we really need to go back to work. Just a couple more minutes. If Roxy said she will be here, then she will be here. I just don't see why I'm standing around, doing nothing, and waiting for Roxy, when I could be standing around, doing nothing, and getting paid for it. Come on, Lumi, Roxy needs our help. Yeah, well, good intentions don't qualify as a legal tender t tender like a chicken tender ah my parents wouldn't listen no offense but it's a uh, isn't rollo always getting into trouble something feels different this time what can we do to help we need to check uh, where uh, the adults aren't so i guess it's uh, up to us to check weepwood our shift doesn't end for another couple of hours. We could spend the time making posters. That would be great, I guess. Right, Fritz and I will check Weepwood. We'll be back later to pick up those posters. I think my dad uh, has a map of uh, Weepwood. Let's swing by my house and grab it before we head out. I guess we can check here. What's uh, this about a missing child? I must uh, stress that the situation is completely under control. It just all seems so terrible. And you're sure there is nothing we can uh, do to help? Nonsense, Yank, uh, Yank, um, Yank Miss uh, Cot Cotter. Uh, will turn up safe and sound, I am certain. Oh, young Mr. Cotter. Oh, it's like his Rollo's name. His name is Cotter. Oh, however you pronounce that. We just focus on settling in. I trust my sister has uh, supplied you with a uh, suitable uh, lodging. Oh, yes. Uh, Miss Valentine uh, has uh, been more than uh, accommodating. We were just telling our daughter uh, back... Uh, like that. 
Now, where did she run off to? His eyes went wide in a disbelief. What do you mean, vanished? That's impossible. Oh my. He doesn't even see the dinner he's in. That book about us. Okay, let's go to the library. Kato volunteered at the library during the summers. He wasn't very social, so he'd dedicate each summer to becoming an expert in a single subject, making him a reliable source of very particular knowledge. If you were to ask Kato something he didn't know, he'd escape into the dusty old bookshelves and return with just the right thing. Hey, Kato. Kato was lost in his reading. Luca crooked his neck to see the title. Introduction to Melatology. Uh -huh. Oh my god, she's so adorable. Little birdie. Or penguin. Both. Oh hey Luca, you snuck up on me. Good book? Don't know, just started. He gestured to the shelves. I'm really running out of uh, books I haven't uh, read yet. So now it's uh, one of the wonderful worlds of bees. Turns out bees are pretty cool. For instance, did you know uh, that around 70% of uh, bee species actually live in the uh, underground tunnels? Or that if uh, there are two queens in a hive, they will fight to the death for su supremacy? Fight. That's interesting, but you haven't seen Rollo around recently, have you? Not since yesterday. Keep an eye out, uh, out for him, okay? Sure thing. If I see him, I will uh, be the first. You will be the first to know. Okay, we checked the library. And who is this person? Hey, Jess. Oh, hey, Luca. Did Rollo come by? No. I was actually surprised. He's usually here early on the days when the, a new issue drops. Rollo's the biggest Hang Atomic fan I know. Uh, beside myself, that that is. Well, if he does swing by, tell him to meet me you know where. I don't know where. No, he knows where. Uh, oh. Roger, that uh, spa space code. Code? Kate? Space cadet. Was the bottom cadet. corner shelf was a dusty array of thick science books. Only one binding was clean enough to read. Cellular biology and the chemistry of mitosis. Boring. Mycological phosphorescence. Ugh. More like... My... Oh, Myco... <laughs> my complete loss of interest. <laughs> the entire top level of the library was devoted to comics, most of which were Hank Atomic and the myriad of lesser revered spin offs. Can we go behind? No, we cannot. New editions? There were rarely any actual new editions. Simply, a variety of existing content rotated into the front display each week. Not fooling anyone. Oh, the cobs I've eaten. A salad-centric travel guide for the mildly adventurous. Yuck. Sally Seashore's simple succulent sundries. Luca brushed off a smudge of dust. Or maybe it was flour. 30 recipes so easy you'll doubt it's even edible. Succulent? Nice. You could be checking everything. The, curtain. the methods and ruminations of Patrick C. Montesquieu. One of the greatest acting minds of our time. By Patrick C. Montesquieu. 
Okay, gonna try to poke around the library. And hello! What sort of monster puts candy behind a locked door? Hey, Mr. Uh, Nutcrate works uh, weird hours sometimes. Of course he does. How about you? When do I work? No, what's your name? Luca Van Horn. You new here? Yep. Uh, not by a choice. We moved often, giving her little time to establish any real connections. She would tell you she prefers it that way. I'm looking for my friend Rollo. He didn't come home last night. So he's missing? I guess so. Like missing, missing? Does that sort of thing happen uh, a lot around Luca here? shifted his feet uncomfortably. What? That sucks. Yeah. So I should probably get going. Hey, wait up. What? Beck pulled a coin from her pocket. I'm coming with you. What? So says uh, the unlucky penny. Unlucky? Yep, uh, well technically it's a... Uh, it landed on head. Leave this kind of uh, find his friend alone. I'll leave this kid. But I always do the opposite. Oh, that's kind of like me and Rollo. I guess Rollo is uh, my unlucky penny. That settles it. A person should never be without their lucky penny. Let's go find him. The name's Beck. Pleasure to meet you, Beck. I suppose I could use some help. Try to keep up. Okay, I'm just checking if something changed. Joey, have you seen Rollo around? No, sorry, Luca. I've had my eyes in the dirt looking for beetles. I can't seem to find any. He never come home last night. Do you think it's because it's uh, been colder than normal? I don't see why that uh, would uh, have anything to do with Rollo. N no, the beetles. Do you think the temperature confused uh, their... 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 What to say? I'm not a beetologist. <laughs> Just keep eye out for him, would ya? Of course. I wouldn't believe he would keep an eye. Luca peeked up at the beehive. It appeared to be deserted. Hmm, that's strange. This way. Ah. Oh. We will go there later. Let's go here first. Oh. Put it. <gasps> Dang, they boarded up uh, the way in. Around? Ooh. Luca felt a chill as he approached Beck. Her eyes were locked on the strange green liquid. The nearby grass was coated in a fine layer of frost. Uh, is this sort of thing normal around here? Because paddling of glowing ooze are definitely not what I expected from this place. I have no idea what the tap is. Well, uh, the next, uh, the next obvious step is science. And what uh, does science suggest? Poke it with a stick. Luca watched as Beck dipped a broken tree branch into the goo. Beck's eyes widened as flowers grew from the dead wood. First small buds, which quickly bloomed into vibrant petals. What the? Ooh. As quickly as they had grown, the flowers began to shrivel and turn gray. Beck cool. dropped the stick with a grunt of disgust. Okay. So the science tells us this uh, gang is weird as hell. Oh yeah, it seems dangerous. Hey Tish, look what uh, the cat dragged in. Yep. I don't have time for this uh, right now, Iggy. Ah, uh, don't uh, say things like that. It hurts Tish's feelings. Ain't that right, Tish? Yep. She looks fine to me. Wait, hello, I don't think we haven't been properly introduced. 
Iggy said a name. This is my compat uh, what? Compatory or whatever? Your friend Tish? Yep. You've uh, probably heard of us. I uh, can't say I have. I'll forgive you just uh, this once uh, on account of uh, you being new around here. Why would you uh, hang out with uh, this dude? Mm hmm? Oh, he seems pretty alright. Iggy, why do you have to be so... you? He was, uh, has he even told you that his parents skipped out on him? Shut up. It's true, they got uh, tired of uh, having such a pathetic kid and uh, left him. Iggy, I'm only gonna say this one time. Don't talk about my family. Ah, well, look who's uh, grown a backbone now that uh, a girl's around. First his uh, pups croaked, then his mom finally couldn't take it anymore and bounced. Iggy took a step towards Luca, his sneer lit by the glowing puddle. Beck could see tears welling in Luca's eyes, his fists clenched. Some things about Beacon Pines were very different from the city, but a bully from a hayseed town is really no different from a city bully. Beck took a deep breath and thought. Well, time to bust out the... Tickle strange. Well, time to bust out the strange. Hmm. Alright, Luca, looks like you need a little mud bath. What's wrong with you, uh, new kid? We are about to pound your friend. Mm. Beck stared in silence. <laughs> the only sign of life being the twitch of an eye. It's weird when people don't talk. Yep. Stop being a weirdo. Oh, hello. Are you some kind of uh, wakadu? Makes sense. Wakadus travel in packs. Uh, dad, dude, dude. Do dad. At the sight of Iggy taunting back, something in Luca snapped. Iggy smirk shifted to a look of shock as Luca launched himself into his stomach. Arr. Like Iggy's like clothes were drenched in the glowing ooze. Looked away. You jerk, my clothes are ruined. I'm gonna... His voice began to slur as he struggled to get up. Raggle. I don't feel... So good. <gasps> Health? I'm sorry, I just... Oh, shit. Yep. Uh, let's see... What's gonna happen... If we do the tickle? Can we leave them like that? Well, time to bust out the tickles. Hey, Tish, wanna see something cool? Yep. Check it. Beck lunged forward and began to tickle under Tish's arm. What the? Tish, is she tickling you? Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. Tears began to form in Tisha's eyes as she gasped for breath between gales of laughter. <laughs> Beck redoubled her efforts until Tish finally had had enough. What just happened? She seems nice. Sorry for the interruption. I think you were just threading us? Eddie's eyes darted around, a realization dawning on his face that he was now outnumbered. I just remembered. I have somewhere to be. Hmm. See you around, Iggy new kid. Iggy at the puddle before making his escape. No. A little shit. Whoa. Uh, what a little creep. Uh, but I think you got a little ooze on your hair. Beck shook the ooze out of her hair as best as she could. Is it bad? It depends. What are you your feelings about having a more mature... Refined look. Oh god. Doesn't look that bad. She Capture grew like four. an arm, like a 
Yeah, he looked weird. She looks cute. I think. Okay, let's continue to charge before we still have some time. Policy. So let's Luca paused roll. for a moment, catching his breath. He'd only just met Beck, and somehow he already managed to drag her into this mess. Hopefully he could make it up to her, but finding Rolo was his primary concern. Okay, so what we can find around here? Anything? Oh, <clears throat> can walk on a goop. Goop no good. Property on Valentine, fertilizer company. Looks old. Okay, doesn't seem... Oh. Luca, what the hell are you doing out here? And why did a kid with a gray hair just run past... Uh, pass us in a panic. Foxy and Fitz looked drained. It was clear they'd spent all day searching. That's Beck. I don't care who she is. What happened? We were just helping looking for Rollo. Luca, I need you to start telling me the truth. Roxy's temper could often be dismissed as the impatience of an older sibling. But this was the most intense Luca had ever seen her. Her eyes were wild and unfocused, looking straight through Luca. We are, run we are running out of time. In a torrent of rambled words and tears, Luca broke down. Rollo and I weren't just playing uh, in the Weep Woods yesterday. We were investigating lights at the old Valentine's warehouse. But someone was there in a strange suit. And we hide in a dumpster and had a heavy bag drop on us. And I think it was a body. And we ran, but uh, we got split up. And I ran home. And it's all my fault. And now my best friend might never come back. Wow. Just, Roxy, wow. still exhausted and angry, softened briefly as her eyes hunted the ground in thought. With a determined sigh, she looked up at Luca. It's not your fault, Luca. Rolo's gonna be okay, I promise. Roxy drew herself up. I'm gonna fix this. Luca, go home. But I wanna help. This is too dangerous for a kid. I just... I can't just sit around. I have uh, to do Roxy something. Tried to think of the safest place to send Luca. We go back to that little uh, treehouse you two like to play in. Wait there in case Rolla shows up. Sounds like a plan? Luca wiped his cheeks and gave a quick nod. You did the right thing telling me the truth. Now scoot. You really believe his story? What other option do we have? Things have been strange around here leading up to the festival. My dad has been uh, acting weird lately. Well, weird and normal. Looking into the puddle, Roxy rubbed her arms to warm up. Why is this... Uh, what is so cold here? This place give me the wheelies. Wait the treehouse in case Rollo shows up. Just to pick up all of those and throw at the, the thing, but now it's broken. I don't really want to go over here, so we're gonna go here just to see what's that. After the foul harvest destroyed their wealth and reputation, the Valentines shuttered off their estate from the rest of town. The Valentine Mansion loomed over every other building in town, both figuratively and literally. Nothing here, at least not yet. Okay, let's go to the treehouse then. Be a good, good little boy and listen to Roxy. Mr. Nuncree oh. jumped with a start. Whoa, don't sneak up on an old fellow like that. Sorry. Who are you talking to? What? Luca motioned to the phone booth. Oh no, I was just uh, checking because I thought I heard a ring, but the dang thing never does, of course. Yeah, I've never seen any anyone use it, really. The 
The whole thing's uh, a waste of money if you ask me. Any word from Rollo yet? Not yet. Long time for a boy to lose his way. Rollo knows uh, those woods too well to get lost. I suppose you're right. Silly boy, um, boys antics have this uh, whole town worried sick. Antics? We all know Rollo likes to play uh, his little pranks. You think this is a prank? What other possible explanation could uh, there be? He's not playing a prank and he didn't get lost. Someone took him, I know it. Who would, uh, who would you think, well, how would you know that? Unless, look, is there something else that you know? Mr. Nuncree hmm. gently placed one of his substantial hands on Luca's shoulder. Thank it, boy, if there is uh, something you know, something that could help uh, your friend, you need to tell folks. Luca peered up at Mr. Nuncreed. Kind eyes warmed a stern face. There was a deeper emotion hiding beneath it all. It was subtle, but Luca could sense something eating away at him. There was a uh, shame lurking. Okay, we have only one. There was a shame lurking behind those eyes. A deep sadness. If Mr. Nuncreed was that worried about Rollo, maybe he could help. Yesterday, Rollo and I were messing around at the old uh, Valentine's warehouse. Mr. Nuncreed raised an eyebrow. <clears throat> Both of you? You were with Rollo when he went missing? Not exactly, I was hiding in a dumpster. A dumpster? What were you doing in there? At first we were just looking around, then someone in a strange yellow suit came and dumped something out on us. We both got scared and ran. That was the last I saw him. You got scared by some garbage? Well, that's what I would... Uh, I don't go uh, skulking in someone's dumpster. But it wasn't garbage. I think... I think it was a body. I'm sure it was just some trash. No, there was a name tag. It said Deep Engineering. Mr. Nuncreed's shoulders slumped. I wish you wouldn't have said that. A deep sigh bellowed from his chest. Is he a bad guy? Why did you have to? I tried, Luca. God knows I tried to keep you safe. Luca attempted to take a step back, but Nuncreed's hand clamped down on his shoulder. But you, Van Horns, just can't help yourself, can you? We were all so close, so close to being done with this. With a firm shove, Nuncreed manhandled Luca into the phone booth. <gasps> what? What are you doing? Out of my hands now. The door latched shut with a mechanical hiss. Hmm. Shut. As Luca pounded the glass, the floor dropped from under his feet. The inside of the phone booth was now a loose capsule plummeting at gravity's whim. Luca winced and pressed his hands to the walls. As he braced for impact, the capsule hurried to a surprisingly smooth stop. He felt a cold rush of air and opened his eyes with hesitance. Two large figures in hazmat suits occluded his view. Luca heard the deep, resigned voice of Mr. Nuncreed over an intercom. He knows too much. The end. Don't tease us like that. This better not be the end. It sounds suspicious. Of course, he just pretended to be all worried and stuff. He's a bad guy. Well, I hope we will find a different charm to use there. Because we cannot tell him what we know. Since now we know that he is not the best of guys yeah there i said it he's not the best of the guys so well i don't know about you guys but i think like taking a break and when we're gonna come back we will find out a little bit more because this is definitely not the end so thank you guys so much for watching hope you guys enjoy it 
and I will see you on the next one. Bye bye.